one of the reason is I minus O, then it allows you to spit the output into the file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. <coughs> So, uh, I'm having a hard time. So here's the name of the system call that's being executed along with its arguments. Uh, after the equals sign, you see the uh, response code. So if we um, scroll down a little bit, part two, whatever. So here's an example of the. Um, of the write system call. So write, first argument is the file descriptor. So it's using file descriptor one, which is the standard output. X-Tray essentially gives you a sample of um, some of the output. And the um, last argument is the number of bytes in this string that it wants to output. So these are the list of the files in my home directory. Not all that interesting. So another um, useful argument to asterisk is minus c. Minus c allows you to um, summarize the um, system calls into a table. So it tells you uh, how many of the calls were made, how many returned errors, calls per second, and how long is spent uh, within. The, um, and this is very fast, so not really any significant time spent within um, LS. Sorry, it's a little confusing for me because the computer thinks it's on the right when it's on the left. My brain can't quite handle that. But it's uh, written that uh, it takes zero seconds. It's impossible. It should take some, some time. It's 0. 0.00000. 000. <laughs> So it don't take any time, but it should take at least one uh, CPU call. For yeah, it's showing you like actual clock time, so it's faster than what it's able to actually uh -huh. log here. Um, uh, I do. Did I lose VPN? I lost VPN. Look at that. Just on time. Maybe we can. <laughs> so the next one is um, capital T. This one's pretty cool. On the right hand side, it tells you how long it's spent inside that system call. That one is real time because <laughs> it actually has a value. Um, if you add a smaller T, it gives you the date and well the time that the system call was run at. It's also that value is not that helpful because it, seconds is not uh, granular enough for really to get useful information so you can um, you can add more and that puts the um, milliseconds on the air or microsecond and one more t puts it in um, epoch time which is a little bit easier to pass um, x trace also has an option uh, with minus E, and you can give it some filter parameters. Um, so in this example, you can do S trace minus E trace equals network. And um, there are um, other trace options here that are listed in the man page. Uh, one, I think, shows you like file I.O., uh, but network is particularly useful because it will only show you system calls related to um, communicating over the network. So go ahead and connect to the web server running locally, right? So uh, in this case, you only see the socket connections open, but you don't see any of the read or write um, systems, just um, network operations. If I go ahead and uh, take this out, you know, you get everything else. It's a useful option. Um, you can also have a trace filter on um, certain arguments. So if you do x-trace uh, read equals one, um, let's do write equals one. So I want to tell um, x-trace, I'm only interested in write system calls to file descriptor one. Which didn't work there, so that's awesome. 
I ran bash for it. Okay. So uh, let's go back to the. So here's a uh, summary of all the options. I have this uh, presentation on um, GitHub. Uh, so you can download it and see some of the information. So some of the things S-Trace is going to allow you to see is long running system calls, which could be an indication of maybe slow network activity, maybe sometimes it's bad hardware, bad code, or uh, bad cables sometimes. It'll allow you to see um, possibly infinite or long running loops, because you'll see the same system calls maybe run over and over again in the same, same pattern. Um, you might also see um, unnecessary I.O. That you might constantly be reading the same data from the same file, the same section over and over again, which might be better cached in the process memory instead of wasting all that time with uh, I.O. And um, you might have a, an SQL problem. You might be reading you know, a, a very large data set over the network that you didn't really intend to. Like you know, you're reading 5,000 rows out of a MySQL database, but you only needed five of them, and you were filtering it in code. In that case, it might be better to filter it on the database server instead of wasting all that um, network I.O. And you can also get a kind of an idea of what the customer is seeing, or what they're experiencing, or what, what they're doing. So in order to make uh, this filtering a little bit easier, I wrote this tool called SSSQL.pl. Uh, what it allows you to do is to take the output from S-Trace and uh, insert it into um, a SQLite database. So, in order to demonstrate what we're going to do, do we need to... Oh. We're going to S-Trace um, Apache right now. Start, um, um, the script that I wrote needs to see this set of arguments in order to um, pass the output. Otherwise, it will complain. 